Hi, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it when you choose to spend time with me and actively listen. Congratulations, that's the first step in effective communication, which is the cornerstone of a healthy relationship. Even though we've all grown up learning to talk and communicate with others, it seems when we get into an intimate relationship and when we're living with someone, it can be difficult to have a productive conversation, especially when our feelings get involved. Interpersonal communication is based on an agreement between two people to try to understand each other, to create cooperation and a peaceful living environment. I've mentioned specific communication methods, including a tune and the Venus talk. Those methods are mostly about using active listening skills. Sometimes it's necessary for you to take the lead in a conversation, confront a situation, or solve a problem through talking. Most men are eager to solve problems to establish cooperation and harmony, but they might need a little help getting started. Here is a list of eight tips to help keep a conversation on track and guide the dialogue in a productive manner. The first three tips relate to opening the conversation. Number one, decide on the result you want to achieve. Take a minute and ask yourself the purpose of the conversation and then let the other person know. Start by saying, I just need to vent about my job or here's a problem I would like your input on. Or, I want to explain why I got so upset last night. Many of us want to begin offering advice or fixing what's wrong for our partner rather than just listening. By stating the focus of the conversation, you'll both know what you need and the result you're looking for. Number two, stay on track. When the conversation has a stated focus, keep that in mind and stay on track. Resist the urge to veer off into backstory or past examples. Focus on the present and move toward your goal. Number three, observe the emotional climate. Notice the rising of emotion, shutting down or sounding defensive. The volume may go up or tension in voices or gestures increases. The conversation might switch to other topics or the past to stack up more information to make your case. This piling on of information fuels emotions rather than help solve the problem. The problem in the room is no longer what you were talking about. It's the emotion that you now need to address. Number four, talk about the emotion. As soon as you can tell the emotional climate is heating up, stop talking about the topic. Try and get the conversation back on track by talking about the emotion. You might say, it feels to me that you might be getting upset. What's going on? Or, hold on, I can tell I'm getting upset. Give me a minute to calm down. Then take some deep breaths. Number five, talk soft emotions. Once you've moved the conversation off the content and onto the emotional problem, avoid using harsh labels like anger, irritation, defensiveness, or control. Look for the softer emotions that are underneath those stronger ones. Control can come from anxiety or worry. If the person you're talking with displays demanding or controlling behavior, ask them, what are you worried about? Defensiveness is natural when a person feels criticized. You may counter defensiveness by saying, I'm not trying to be critical, I just don't understand. A person may appear to be angry when really she's hurt. Acknowledge this by saying, I can tell you're upset, I'm sorry if I hurt you, and give her the space to vent, staying quiet until she calms down. You can use the same soft emotion language yourself to help the other person understand what is emotionally happening with you. For example, you might say, I'm frustrated because I'm worried about this situation. Number six, if both of you become upset and can't rein it in, or if you're feeling emotionally abused, call a timeout. Tell the other person, I'm getting upset, or we're both getting too emotional. Take charge, request a break, and agree to come back in 30 minutes. 
use that 30 minutes to take some deep breaths or walk off the emotional upset. Then it's time to return and repair with number seven, circle back. After a half hour break, try the conversation again. If you're still upset or the other person is still upset, stop again. This waiting period allows your emotional brains to relax so your rational brains can take over again. What you don't want to do is come back, say you're sorry, but bypass solving the problem. Get back on topic and finish your conversation. If you can't, even with long waiting, write a letter or email to explain your softer emotions and ideas to keep moving towards your goal. Work together with your partner on finding the best time of day to have these emotional conversations and agree to signal each other when strong feelings are getting in the way of listening. Number eight, be patient with yourself. Learning to have a productive conversation is not about personality, but about learning new skills, such as how to redirect your focus and your brain. It can feel awkward and may not go as well as you'd like. You could fall back into old habits. That's normal when you're learning a new skill. Do the best you can each time and keep practicing. Just like anything else, with practice, you will improve. Follow these eight steps when you want to initiate a productive conversation with a life partner, family member, or close friend. And you should be able to more effectively solve problems together. Let me know if you've used these steps to improve your communication by leaving a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Please visit my Patreon page and consider pledging a small amount each month to join our community, receive bonus perks, and support my work. And take a moment now to like this video with a thumbs up. Then subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications when I upload a new video. Thanks for meeting with me. We'll talk again soon. The Softer Side